Hey everyone, you're listening to the Active Turnkey Podcast, a podcast designed for hands-off, passive real estate rental investors. In the Active Turnkey Podcast, you'll hear Tom Olson and Jared Stoltmeister discuss all things turnkey rentals with other turnkey providers, service providers, and rental investors. Our goal is to help you reach your financial freedom and whatever comes after that. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Turnkey Podcast. Uh, This is our first podcast. I'm your host, Jared Stillmeister, and uh, this is Tom Olson. And uh, before we go into a little bit of what the Active Turnkey Podcast is going to be about, I'd like to introduce Tom. And Tom, tell us a little bit about yourself, your experience in real estate and what you do and and all that stuff. Well, today's podcast, is, as you can see, is just going to be the opener. Um, We're not going to get too much into, you know, what is Active Turnkey, what is Turnkey, but we're just going to kind of have a little conversation a little bit about how we might be able to help educate you. And um, I think an educated consumer is the best kind of consumer you you can want. And if you're even if you're selling turnkeys, which we are and and active turnkeys, which we've coined the phrase and I wrote the book on active turnkey, the best way to buy rentals. um, I think the best way to be able to work with somebody is if they're educated. So that's kind of what the, the purpose for this podcast is to educate the consumer and also be able to find maybe new ways to open up our doors, Olson Group Network. Um, and we, we're here building rental portfolios for investors in Northwest Indiana. And we wanna be able to connect with our audience and and maybe find new audience members that may wanna connect with us here in Northwest Indiana. But as far as back to your question for me, mm-hmm. um, who am I? I basically um, got into real estate starting as a contractor. So I started in contracting when I was 12 years old. And um, as soon as I got out of high school, I was working for a guy and I started a side business. And what was that side business? It was, it was a, first of all, it was a side business. Um, I, uh, I, I went to work all day and then at night mm-hmm. I would actually find people and then I would get jobs from those people. And then those people would refer me to other people and I would uh, get jobs that way. So I started my side business when I was 19 years old, um, working for outside people. And I always have believed ever since I read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, when I was 19 years old, um, that you should have multiple streams of income. And I believe owning rental properties is one of those great ways. Like every single house you have is a separate stream of income. Mm-hmm. Um, so so me, I bought my first rental when I was 20 years old. Me and Josh Belk, actually my, my, my accountant now, um, bought a house together. And my journey in real estate kind of started there. But my journey in really doing what I'm doing today started in 2006. So so fast forward from the time I was 19 years old, I got married right away. I bought my first house right away, which I actually kept as a rental for a while. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the keys I do think, especially for the, for the younger generation, younger people that are listening right now, I'll tell you, if you're going to... If you're gonna buy a house, buy a starter home. Like, don't mm-hmm. buy, go buy that three hundred thousand dollar home to start with and think it's your forever home. Buy that cheaper home, keep it, move up, and every time you move up, you don't have to pay tax on it. If even if you did sell it, but I would highly recommend it. That's one of the biggest keys of financial freedom, in my opinion. Um, but for me, like, I always knew I would get into real estate. I always believed in real estate, and um, my dad didn't even buy his first property until I was about fourteen or fifteen years old, mm-hmm. and during that. During that time of his life and my life, he kind of taught me, he's like, never rent a home. He's like, for yourself, never rent a home. And he's like, learn from my mistakes. Don't, don't do this. And I mean, and you have to, you have to think we were paying maybe seven fifty, eight hundred dollars a month for rent for all these years. And at that time, houses were like a hundred thousand dollars or less mm-hmm. that we would, we, that we would have lived in if we would have bought. And it would have been probably three, four hundred dollars a month cheaper if he would have been able to buy. And that's kind of like why he taught me to, to, to never um, rent. But I think the longer run is that the equity that you get built up in that property when you buy the property. It's never about like just the cash flow. It's always about the equity that gets built up and the wealth that gets built up by real estate. So um, so like I said, fast forward a little bit. I, I, I worked that side business to the point where I was making probably you know, 60, 70% on my side business as I was making in my full-time job. And I was a foreman running a guy, a construction company for a guy. And um, in 2006, after I had been working for this guy for 15 years or so, anybody who's in construction around the country knows that 2006 is when everything really started to fall. We think 2008 happened because that's when the housing crisis and, you know, the bank crisis kind of started. But really construction went it had stopped. It literally like stopped overnight in 2006. And I had to figure out what in the world I was going to do. 
I mean, I can remember coming home and thinking to myself, man, two months ago with my full-time job and with my side business, I was making well over six figures and I was thinking, this is great. Mm -hmm. Two months ago, that's what I was making. Now I'm looking at the next year and only having like $20,000 worth of income that I thought was, that I for sure was going to, you know, so I'm like, I'll going out trying to find a paper route, mm -hmm. doing whatever I can possibly do. <laughs> I can remember me and my wife, I had three jobs at one point to just try to make sure if one didn't have work for me, I was, I was doing work for somebody else. And I found a guy named Jonah. Uh, I started making a bunch of phone calls. I had never made phone calls for side work. I had just let people refer me. Mm -hmm. I had told the paint stores about me. I had told different place, st places about me and said, hey, refer me out. Have them. I always thought it was better for them to call me than for sure. me to be calling out people. But uh, so I, I, I called three people one day. I remember. I, I remember this specifically. I'm like, God, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna call three people, and I called three people. And the first person I called actually led me to a second person, and that person was his name was Jonah. And uh, me and Jonah, I went out to the, to a job, and I gave him an estimate that day. He's like, yeah, I got a job for you. He's like, he's like, can you come over here? I'm like, oh, that's, sure, this is great, cool. you know. So he 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 tells me I got a job for you, and he's and I'm like, okay. So I gave him an estimate. He's like, oh, you're gonna give me an estimate today. So that was kind of a surprise for oh, him yeah. that I could actually oh, yeah. give him an estimate Definitely. in one day. We we even know that now with <laughs> yes, contractors, right? Yes, we do. Um, it's hard to, sometimes to do that. But you so, went I, there, so you went there the same day. I went there the got same day. The estimate the same day. I gave him an estimate the same day, <laughs> and he's like, when can you start? And I was like, well, I can start tomorrow. And he's like, okay, you're hired. Yeah. And then he's like, "I'll say when are you gonna be done." I said, "So I gave him an actual time frame when I was mm -hmm. gonna be done." And when I got done with the job, he's like, he came to me. And he's like, "Tom, like, like I've got to hire you." He's like, he, "I'm like, okay, you just did. What are you talking about?" And he's like, "You're the first contractor that's ever come in and you've done the job on time and on budget." And I'm like, "Okay, isn't this is what we're supposed to do? Like, isn't this kind of, you know, like?" <laughs> And it was kind of funny because before that, a lot of, I worked for a lot of homeowners and I would do small jobs, you know, odds and end jobs a lot of time. And um, most of the time, the reason why I got those jobs was, and the people would tell me, the reason why you got this job is because you're the only person to call me back. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, honestly, for me, I'm like, gosh, these are huge lessons in my life. And I think mm -hmm. salespeople kind of know that. If you just answer the phone, you're probably in the top 15%. Um, and then if you call them back a couple extra times, you're probably in the top oh, 10%. Yeah. But um, hmm. but anyway, so that kind of was, I learned a lot of lessons during that time in my life. It was a very humbling peri period of, of time in my life. And I, um, I uh, so literally within uh, a couple days, I was running three full rehabs for this guy every month. Like we were just doing three rehabs like clockwork. At the same time in my life, I don't know what it was, but God gave me confidence and I really kind of went after this guy. And he, I mean, he told me right up the front, I don't want to do anything. He's like, I want you to run everything. I want you to run the company. And so it, it went from doing one job to running all the rehabs to within like another month or two, I'm running his whole company. And um, within six months, I was actually a 50-50 partner with him in this in his business. And he's like, I just don't want anything to do with it. He's like, whatever we make, I'll split with you. No problem. You can have, the, you can have it. No, no big deal. And um, so that happened within six months. Within about a year, we had done about 30 rehabs for different investors and then he decided he's he called me one day he's like tom i'm leaving i'm like what do you mean he's like i'm moving to alabama i'm like what do you mean like I, i'm thinking to myself i just went through this you know like sure i i built something and i had a bunch of stuff going and everything was going good and all of a sudden you know i fall on my face and like I, i'm like i can't go through this again like what are you talking about you can't mm -hmm. you can't leave me and he's like well he's like he you, you you've got the contacts you know you can maybe just do what we were doing and just you know, so I'm like, okay, great. So I went and talked to the three guys that we were doing rehabs for. And I said, hey, if I could help you find houses, if I could rehab them for you, if I could help you get the utilities turned on, if I can help you sell it at the back end, I will give you, I'll give, find the best realtor I can possibly find to help sell these properties for you. And I'll just manage the whole thing for you. Mm -hmm. um, would you do me the favor to just give me the rehab? Like, that's what I told the guy. And I, and thinking back at it now, I was like, man, I was really dumb. You know, I, I was thinking <laughs> to myself, this is a great idea. But, sure. I, but and, and I would love it if a contractor came up to me right now and said, hey, if I can help you find houses, if you just give me the uh, rehab, of course would, you, would. I would do it 100 times out of 100. Every time. And um, I know I provided so much value to those guys. And we, we flipped over 100 homes for these guys in about a three or four year period of time. And that's basically kind of where Active Turnkey was mm -hmm. born. Mm -hmm. Because in a way, like that's exactly what I'm doing now in Active Turnkey. So at, at, I would go out, help them find houses. I'd give them a scope of work before we bought the house. And then we do the rehab 
and then we'd sell the property. I mean, mm-hmm. it was just as simple as that. But the middle guy was running the running the whole show. He kind of, and the middle guy knows what the operational costs are. The middle guy knows, yep. you know, what, what what you know, the back end. And I just had to like work my tail off to make sure people were paid and do everything I had to possibly do to get money in and. You know, be I was I was a, it was a one man show from a business perspective. I had to sell the jobs, I had to make sure the rehabs were done, and then I had to pay everybody in the back end. Right? I mean, I didn't have any employees to do any of those things. The only employees I had at the time were just people that would have actually help me swing the hammer or mm-hmm. paint the walls or do the tile or whatever the case we were doing on the, on the jobs. So, um, so that's kind of like how Active Turnkey started, and then at the same period of time, I got into I got hooked up with another man, and we started wholesaling a lot of houses. So mm-hmm. that kind of like opened my eyes to this whole realm of what value the front end is as well and how like you can actually make money because when I was working with these guys I was just going to finding houses on on the MLS we were just just chucking them off the MLS mm-hmm. one after another mm-hmm. and um and so without putting myself in the middle of that of that deal at all it, it was a great deal for the investor but it was it was really kind of not the best deal for me. But at the end of the day, I figured to myself after doing that for so many years, and then going through a wholesaling business, and we wholesaled for five or six years, um, understanding if I could put all this together, mm-hmm. there is a, still a ton of value if I could still get the properties for the right price, and to be able to give it to the to the end user, the or the end turnkey buyer for the right price. Um, and which is why I love Active Turnkey so much, and that's why I say it is the best way to buy rentals. So that's mm-hmm. kind of like a little bit of story about me personally, how I got involved in doing what we're doing now, and really how Active Turnkey came to be about. It's kind of a compilation of learning, mm-hmm. of life lessons for for probably 15 years of my life. You know, learning construction, learning business, even like in business, I had to learn a lot from Josh Belko. I told you I bought that first rental with. Um, you know, a lot of it had to do with knowing how to set up books, knowing how these mm-hmm. everything works, how to make sure that people get paid and setting up processes for um, making sure contractors get paid and making sure that you're making money at the end of the day. If you're not making money, then like you're spinning your wheels and doing a bunch of work for, for nothing. So um, so that's that's a little bit about me. Um, we, I have I have been a part of buying and selling about 15 or 1600 homes in, in my career, mostly single family. Um, in Northwest Indiana, there's a lot of single family. There's not a lot of multi, but there's a couple. We've done some four units. We've done some duplexes. We've done some um, eight or ten unit type of um, scenarios where, where we we do get involved with. But for the most part, I really like single family. And um, I'll tell you why. I like single family because when I'm buying, I feel like there's a lot more options on the back end. Like it gives me tons of options on, on because a homeowner might buy it. A, a, a turnkey buyer might buy it. Um, a hedge fund may come in and buy it. There's a lot of people that would be willing to buy it. But if I'm buying like a big complex and I'm selling my exits a lot harder, it's a little bit harder. Plus, I like it from the lending perspective because I also take money from pe- from private individuals to loan me money instead of using banks. We've pretty much eliminated banks from that. And it's again, it's a one to one scenario. Mm-hmm. You know, one note mortgage for one house with one person. And if for some reason, if something ever happens, I feel like it's easier for me to negotiate a deal with a person than to try sure. to like negotiate a package or whatever. So um, that's kind of why we do what, 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 what we do here. And that's a little bit of story about my background and how we've gotten to where we are now. Today, we own a Olson Group Network, Olson um, Construction Management Services, Olson Property Services, um, and an education company called Good Success. But mm-hmm. um, for, this, for this podcast, mm-hmm. we're really gonna focus on just the Olson Group um, uh, scenario we'll get a little bit in the construction a little bit in the property management absolutely as well because i think that those pieces are very important pieces of this of this process and i always say you know you can get the best deal in the world but if you don't have a good property manager it doesn't really matter um and i, and I really believe that so um i'm excited about to get this this podcast started olsen group network is a company who builds rental portfolios for investors mm-hmm. and that's really what we do and i want to be able to showcase what we do but also educate people and take people's questions um, and um, have some fun with it. Sure. Well, we definitely like fun. I, I did want to go back to what you said. You said you were doing this for this investor for quite some time, mm-hmm. and you were working with a wholesaler. You guys were wholesaling together, and then you know now we're sitting here in these seats, and we've sold several hundred active turnkey properties on top of other turnkeys as mm-hmm. well. When, how did it hit you that you had this system already, and you were already doing it? How did it hit you? When did it hit you? Or was it something you already knew and just started doing? How did you come up with Active Turnkey? Or obviously we understand how the concept come is there, the Burr method, but 
when did you realize it was just already something that you were already providing? Well, actually, so um, me and my partner um, before Olson Group, mm -hmm. um, we had gone to some conferences, and there was a so really like it, it was kind of a, kind of funny how you at, you asked that because I didn't really really put it together until you asked that, but it came together when we were at a conference, and the basically the conference was teaching other people financial freedom. Mm -hmm. And which is really like, yeah. I am very passionate about financial freedom. So I know this 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 podcast is not about self help, but it will be about financial freedom. I really believe mm -hmm. financial freedom is will be a core principle piece of um, the, this active turnkey podcast. But the, a man was up teaching about financial freedom, and and they were looking for a product or for a way for us to work with them because mm -hmm. we were on the real estate side. So you got these people, dentists, doctors, money on one side, and then you have providers or operators like us on another, another side trying to figure out, well, what, what do we do? And mm -hmm. yes, we can offer private lending, we can offer some things like that, but if we had a product to be able to sell them, you know, what kind of product will we sell them? And we thought about, okay, we could do turnkeys. Or lots, turnkeys been around for a while. Mm -hmm. And you know, the next couple of podcasts, we will, we will um, articulate, we will explain what turnkey is, why it's valuable, why it even came to be out. Mm -hmm. we, won't, we won't do that in today's episode. Um, but I thought to myself, man, what can I do? I had read a book called The Purple Cow. Mm -hmm. And it kind of talks about your differentiator. What is different about you than anybody else in the market? And um, I thought to myself, nobody in the world that I'd known at, the point, at that time was doing this active turnkey program. They're doing it a little bit now. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I honestly didn't see anybody that was doing this before I came up with this program mm -hmm. um, about four or five years ago. And um, maybe it was about three or four years ago. But mm -hmm. Regardless, so so I basically came up with this program. I pulled it out of my belt. I pulled it right, you know, kind of out of your, you know, like as you live through life, right, exactly. you know, you right. learn things and it's like, sometimes you don't use them anymore, but it's still with you. Mm -hmm. And that's, I just pulled it out and I said, hey, this is what we're gonna do. Like we're gonna do the exact same thing I was doing before, except for instead of going out and finding these houses in the MLS for these people, we're gonna actually wholesale them to them. Mm -hmm. So their acquisition piece, everything else is gonna be the same thing, except for the acquisition piece is gonna be a little different and I'm gonna make some money on the acquisition. Mm -hmm. So um, that's basically how we came up with it. Um, and then I kind of got to work writing this book and you know, kind of putting processes together. And there's a lot of processes. It's it's it's. Cheers. It is a lot of work lot of to parts. do active. It's actually way more work to do active turnkey than it is to do regular turnkey. But in my opinion, it adds so much more value. And I believe there's two ways to make money in this world. Number one is to add value to people's life. And number two is to rip them off. And that's it. And 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 at the end of the day, like, you know, you may you may own a single family rental and you may think, oh, it's not performing that well. I'm going to tell you, you don't have a large enough snapshot. If mm -hmm. once you get the people that will listen and Absolutely. actually go with the with, go with what we say or go with what I've heard from anybody who's been had any kind of experience in this. If you have 20 rentals and you've owned them for a period of five or six or seven more years or or more, and you don't see the benefit of it, then come talk to me. Mm -hmm. But don't buy one or two or three and say, "Well, my single family rentals aren't really doing so well. I should go and do something else," mm -hmm. because I'm telling you. It's not, if you're only in this for the short game, hmm. if you're only in this for the, what your first year cash on cash return is or your first year cap Absolutely. rate or your first year, what this compares to a lending deal or what this compares to a note or what this compares to a fund or whatever, don't even get into it. Don't even waste your time. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to build significant wealth that has the unfair advantage when it comes to taxes for today and for leaving a legacy to your family don't even get me started on all the benefits and we, i'm sure we'll have some <laughs> we don't want to get started. we will have some uh <laughs> some episodes just about the actual benefits but mm -hmm. i mean just to think about if i die every single one of the rentals that i own now i could pass on to my children and they get a brand new stepped up basis which means they get to depreciate it all over again mm -hmm. it's it's insane the amount of of benefit that goes into into what the what you know, an active turn. I mean, a, a, a single family term, route. Right, it's right, it's just right. it's just it's just absolutely insane. So, um, I, I I really just I I really believe in my product. I own a lot myself. I, I do some other things as well. I believe in business. I believe in lending. So, um, I believe in those things as well. But I be, really believe in the active turnkey program, and I really believe in people owning single family rentals if they're going to be into it for the long haul, and if they're going to buy more than one. Like you've got to, I, I tell people get to 10 as fast as you can. Right. And as soon as you get to 10, try to get to 20 as fast as mm -hmm. you can. Mm -hmm. So 
No, it's really good. Tom, Tom really nailed on the experience part. That's huge. Part of what we're going to be really focusing on in the Active Turkey podcast is focusing on experience. That's going to be really important. So guests we'll be talking about or people who are coming in, topics we'll be discussing. These will all be based upon experience. It's so important. A, a lot of people like to to be a thought leader in a specific area and bring up topics, but they really don't have the experience to go along with it. So Tom's talked about a 15-year journey or probably more than that, it's longer than 15 years, but uh, and along the way, picking up all these different tools to put in, and now we can offer this package. And uh, someone who just tries to start up an active turnkey deal just overnight, they're gonna have a hard time. <laughs> they're gonna have a really hard time. Even individuals who are trying to do it on their own, it's gonna be difficult. And so we will get into those types of things. One thing before we transition and talking about what the active turnkey podcast is gonna be like is what it's not. So he did mention it's not a self-help podcast, and there's nothing wrong with self-help. Uh, there's a lot of good things we can use, but that's not the design of this particular podcast. We want to bring some value, bring experience, uh, but not self-help. You know I love self-help, Jerry. He does. He, he I, just, I might sneak just a little bit in, Jerry. Uh, I'm going to try to stop him. Okay, Jerry's going to do gonna, my best. He's, he, he's got to stop. He's going to no. try. He's going to try. <laughs> uh, the next thing is we're not going to sales pitch the whole time. Nope. We do, of course, we do provide turnkey properties. We do help investors build their rental portfolios. But in the end, we're trying to help bring value as well and try to help the investor understand what this is. You mentioned it. I and mean, when I work with my buyers, uh, I always tell them, you can't look at the deal in the first year. You have to look at it as a 30-year picture. And 25 years on the road, you're never going to notice or even barely remember what happened in year one. So you have to kind of take that in perspective. But I'm on that line, sales pitch. Uh, a third thing, leadership. Tons of great stuff about, about, about leadership, about how to be a great leader. Awesome stuff. We're not really going to talk too much about that in this podcast. Also, we're not going to talk about even business. Now, as you grow your turnkey portfolio, you're kind of having your own business in a sense. But we're not talking about how to build a team. We're not talking yeah. about how to how to you know grow managers and leaders within your own companies. Yeah, we so, may have guests on that maybe recommend certain types absolutely. of LLCs to to mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. start up or maybe trusts or. Mm -hmm how to properly insure your, your properties or how to right. make sure all that stuff. But we're not going to necessarily give you advice on how to hire people or right. there's some great podcasts out there that can offer that yep. to you. So we would say, Hey, go listen to them. But in this particular podcast, our goal is to try to stay in line with the turnkey. And yep. if we vary from it, we're going to be one step away. So we'll be bringing in different types of people. So we talked about what it's not. Let's talk about what's going to be there. I mentioned we're going to be within the, the turnkey itself or one step away. So we're different topics. Why buy a turnkey? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. You kind of mentioned a little bit about it. So why? Why would you buy a turnkey property? Uh, we're going to talk about property management. That's huge. Tom said it. He nailed it. The most important piece to turnkey in general, whether you buy active turnkey or turnkey, it's the property management piece. You could buy right, do everything right. In the end, it could be a bad, horrible deal. Or you can do everything wrong, get a good property manager in place, and resurrect this deal. Yep. So property management, we're going to talk about cash flow. We're going to talk about cap rates. We're going to talk about turnover, vetting a property manager, taxes, how to buy. That's a big one. Not just why buy, but how to buy. Uh, we're going to talk about vetting a turnkey provider like us. We provide turnkey product. There are other people that are just like us who provide excellent products. How do you decide? How do you choose? We're going to talk about inspections, another big one. We're going to talk about taxes. We're going to talk about uh, the lease, the rehab. Guys, this keeps on going. We're going to talk about maintenance. We're going to talk about appreciation, performance, strategy, markets. Those are very specific things. Along with that, we're also going to bring in professionals. This is where the experience come in, and it's where network. Tom has built, taken all this time, 15, 20 years, whatever, to build up a network of people. And we want to try to bring as many people in here who aren't going to give their opinion based upon uh, what they read, but what they've done, what they've yep. experienced over the years. And so we have, we're have we going to bring in other real estate investors, guys who haven't done one or two deals. We're talking about guys who have built up their rental portfolios. They've done 20, 30, 50, 100, 300, whatever the number might be. Try to give you that perspective and experience. We're going to bring in attorneys. Yeah, some of our own buyers and yeah. some big people that have bought from many different people. Absolutely. So, yep. Yeah, there's. we're going to try to keep this as open as possible. Um, attorneys, accountants, he mentioned Josh. Uh, Josh Belk in Belk Accounting. He'll be coming here and, and helping us. We're going to bring in some other turnkey providers to give their perspectives. We're going to bring up uh, property managers. Um, in, in, we have our own property manager here in-house, uh, but we'd also like to bring in other property managers to mm -hmm. give some different perspectives. Uh, lenders, huge piece to this process, massive yep. piece. Uh, we have several lenders that we recommend here at Olson Group, and so we'll be bringing some of those in. Contractors, you mentioned you were a contractor. Yep. Having that perspective is very important. So we're going to bring those guys in. We're going to have inspectors and even appraisers. That's the big one. How about that appraiser? Yeah, we want to bring him in here too. Give that added perspective. One of the two risks. That's it. 
For active turnkey, <laughs> Tom, what are the risks for active turnkey? This what are the two risks? Yeah, tell me, tell me. Where you're are buying as is, where is? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've done so much to work our process to be able to give an accurate scope of work when we do act, active turnkey, mm -hmm. which in my opinion, one of the huge benefits of working with somebody, you talk about experience, and we just talked about this in a meeting mm -hmm. this morning with Olson Group um, mm -hmm. of us actually doing this kind of work for people. And one of the biggest benefits that we give people is the fact that we have the experience to be able to give you a really close to accurate mm -hmm. what it's gonna be, um, scope of work and what it's gonna cost. A lot of times we're doing work for uh, for investors that bought from other wholesalers or mm -hmm. bought from mm -hmm. the MLS and they think that they're just, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go out and buy all these houses. And mm -hmm. then they think by looking at just pictures or by what the wholesaler tells them, oh, this is a $20,000 rehab. And they're like, and then when they come to find out, no, it's mm -hmm. a $50,000 rehab. And that's a big difference. Yes. And the fact that, you know, maybe our number, maybe, maybe like some extras come up, but, mm -hmm. but normally it's not that big of a deal. Normally it's a couple thousand dollars or maybe it's, there's none or whatever the case. We, we do the absolute best we can, but with the experience of a company do have, that has done over 400 rehabs, mm -hmm. I think we're mm -hmm. closer to 500 now. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we can be able to give you a really accurate scope of work and a really accurate what you should need to do in order for, to do the property. Um, so, um, well, that'll be, that'll be a really interesting podcast. Just how to understand. We talked about the deal and the vetting of the deal. A mm -hmm. lot of times, uh, that's really interesting word, the deal. So when you think of the deal, some people may think about the acquisition. Well, in active turnkey or the Burr method, there's a whole lot more that happens yep. aside from the actual acquisition yep. of the property. So if you if your idea of a deal is the acquisition, uh, I would study up. There's a whole lot more going into that. So you know, it's really so funny, Jared. More. This is a funny story. This is a great story to, to tell. Tell me. There is a house right now <laughs> that one of our buyers has gone out and he's going to find. He's going to buy this house. Hmm. So he's going to buy the house. And the, I, have, I have personally been this. I have normally have not in all these houses myself, just so everybody knows here. Full it's disclaimer true. here. True. I am not in every one of these houses. <laughs> but I have personally been in this house. And he's going to buy this house. And he has been told it's a $20,000 rehab. And I know for sure it's at least thirty five. dollars mm -hmm. Um, and I've been in the house. There's mold all in the crawl space. It's a lot of mold remediation. There's a lot of other stuff that, and, but that you can't see from the pictures because me and my, me and Becky, my wife, have been in this house. And before it, we we're like, oh, this is a great house. And sure. no, okay, no, this isn't going to work for us. Um, and I still, I'm not saying it's a bad house, mm -hmm. and it might work for the guy sure. just fine. But for me, I knew that oh, going for, going into the deal. So there are two big risks. So with even working with us, there is still a risk about construction. I don't think you're going to have the risk, like I said, from going from twenty thousand dollars to fifty-five thousand dollars, unless mm -hmm. something crazy happens. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I, on the rehab. But that's the one risk. And the other risk is when you're doing active turnkey versus regular turnkey. This is not as much of a risk for for, for regular turnkey, um, although there are some properties sure. that we have been selling lately that are such good cash flow that I don't even really care what they appraise for right. because it's just stupid. How 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 that's a whole good other episode, it, folks. Yeah, different episode. <laughs> but I mean, for the most part, for active turnkey, there's a possibility that what we say the after repaired value is is maybe not quite there. I mean, mm -hmm. normally the, the the, when the appraisers do come in, they may come in a little bit lower. Um, and that, to me, it, I still stand by what I believe the house is worth mm -hmm. because, because of comps and because right. of why I believe it, it's there. But I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you, and even our bankers would be honest with you that if, if they were here, our lenders will tell you there, there's a reason why that. When you're pulling all the money out, mm -hmm. the bank doesn't really want to appraise it for what it's the same appraisal would be appraised for if you were purchasing the property. Now you talk to an appraiser, you talk to um, you know certain banks, they may, no, we don't do that, we only appraise them. No, I, I'm sorry, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these deals and I've seen it time and time again mm -hmm. um, where the where we, we get, we get, we get what we call bad appraisals, but right. appraisals that are a little low, right. um, at such a higher percentage, you know, 30, 40% of the time based on people that are pulling all the equity out of their house at one time mm -hmm. versus people that are just buying a property and there's a set price mm -hmm. and it's been purchased. So, um, and I, I mean, we can, I can, I can show you two houses almost on the same street. That's that, that when it was purchased, it was sold for 135. And when it was appraised active turnkey, it was appraised like for 95 or something. Mm -hmm. it's just, just silly like that. So, um, and I'm not saying that's always the case because sometimes we have great appraisers. We have great people that, mm -hmm. that, that do work for us. 
Um, so I'm not trying to knock the appraisers. It's more, I think it's actually probably more from the order from the bank and from the, some of the upper, uh, they set, set it out a certain way and they need that appraisal done a certain way and they're kind of looking at it differently from a risk perspective, from the bank's perspective. So um, those are the two risks. And I don't even think that one, the appraisal is even a risk. Because mm-hmm. if it appraises too low, it doesn't really matter. You have a little bit more cash into the deal yourself. Right. But at the end of the day, your cash on cash return is higher. I mean, your, your cash on cash return is lower, but your cash on cash, like how much money you're making per month goes up. You're paying off the loan faster. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, you're, you have less a lower payment. So your cash, your, 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 um, your, uh, your return is more every single month. Um, and you have a lower balance on, on your, on your mortgage. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, those are all reasons why, I mean, it's not really a risk as much as like, you might just have more money out of your pocket, but there is a risk when it comes to the actual doing more work in the property, um, that you're buying as is where it is. So that's true. I mean, in my experience working with buyers, that that's all strategy anyway. Some mm-hmm. guys don't mind at all being more out of pocket. Some guys, because yep. of available, how fluid they are, or their funds, they want to have every bit of dollar pulled out as possible. Um, one thing you mentioned was the back end appraisal. So we will we'll hit that specifically yep. in another episode. However, one thing to understand is that appraiser is working off of information. That's it, all data. So in the end, if you're doing anything like this, you want to supply him with as much data as possible to ma- help him make his decision. Uh, and that even goes back to experience. And that even correct. goes back to how much we really try to do help on the back end mm-hmm. of those active therapies. Good stuff. Awesome. Um, so yeah, so the, the, those are all different types of things we're looking to do uh, throughout this podcast, trying to give you an idea. Now, in the end, why this podcast? So we talked about all these different things. There's a lot of people who are providing these t- a similar podcasts. We want to keep it to the turnkey. So we've discussed that. Um, but here, there's also just information available. So Tom, you can speak to this. When you go online, you search different properties. There's a lot of people talking, a lot of chatter about mm-hmm. rentals. But is it possible or have you seen some bad information available, bad perspective, bad advice? Absolutely. So, um, I mean, I've seen people out there that talk about having houses and they're totally okay having negative cash flow. And I just don't believe in that. You know, that's just one example right. of what to me, like, even even if even if you have positive cash flow, it's possible in one year here or there, you may not even right. be positive mm-hmm. just because of something that might come up mm-hmm. in the property. So I don't believe in negative cash going flow into the deal, going negative. into the deal, right, right. Mm-hmm. period. And that's why I believe that there is this curve. There's this kind of like this curve where once a house is worth more than say 150 or 180 or $200,000, there's somewhere in this curve where it doesn't make sense anymore mm-hmm. um, to own a single family rent, you know, rental. Um, and, and I, I wouldn't say it doesn't make sense. It, you know, it, there, there, I'm sure you could make sense of it, but for me, I believe that cash flow is one of those things that you ought to have. So that's just one of the things that I think is bad information out there. I think the other thing is the upfront expectation. Sometimes, Mm -hmm. um, you, if you hear from some person that's just sitting behind a podcast, you know, Mike, and they're not the ones actually providing The, the, the turnkey rental property for you, they're going to give you like a whole different perspective and they may act like they're the ones there to pr- help protect you. But in the end, like the property manager is the one that's actually helping you. Mm-hmm. And at the end, like the provider is the one that's really doing all the hard work for you. So they're the ones that you really want to get to know and you really want to be as close to that as you possibly can. Well, that's a good point. If you think about it, um, some of the people who are doing the talking, they don't even invest themselves. Yep, I've, seen that, well. I've seen that as well. I've seen that as well. You certainly want to have someone who believes in their product enough that they would actually own their own uh, you investments. Got it. Yep. So that that's that's a key point. So you mentioned experience. That's huge. Uh, and so bad information. We're going to try to bring experienced guys who have done this for a long time and try to help you to combat that bad information. Another thing we're going to bring in, uh, these guys are professionals. They do this on a daily basis. We want to bring guys in here who are doing the, doing the work every day. They're building relationships and they're looking to bring value to their own clients. So that's something we also want to do. And then along that line, education. We want to educate, try to help you understand. So you have an idea going in, what are the questions I should be asking? Where, who should I be talking to? Uh, Tom, do you have anything to add as far as the education piece? No, I just know that 
if you're going to get into this, I really do recommend that education. I, I believe you're going to get the most education by actually doing a deal. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I really do. But I mean, as far as education goes, go to Amazon and pick up my book. <laughs> um, right. sh shameless plug there. We're, we're, we're high <laughs> Whoa, plug in what there. Is that book? So um, you can yeah. go pick up the book or if you if you want to get in, in touch with us, we can um, send you a copy if you just help me pay for shipping on it. But um, so we are we're definitely looking to educate people. But mm -hmm. I, I really want to I want to educate people from our perspective and from the perspective as close to the actual deal as I can possibly get it, mm -hmm. get it to. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think that if you're, if you're educated and you, and you have a little bit of a risk tolerance and you can look at the big picture mm -hmm. and that's really what I want to get people to look at. You have to look at the big picture. You look at this at least in a 20 year perspective. Mm -hmm. I think you got to look at this in more, you know, I'm going to get into self help here now. I'm not oh, allowed to oh, in the hundred or 150 year picture when it comes to leaving a legacy. <laughs> we're talking about legacy. Here we go. And, <laughs> 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 no, yeah, self can't talk about legacy. Stop here. it, Tom. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's to me like I it, it, there's just I mean I was talking to a guy that's from Dubai and they own thousands and thousands of properties in um, in Great Britain and in, in Europe and they're like we bought these things in the fifties. He's like we would never sell these properties. Mm. Why would we ever sell these? I mean they have, I think they have a thousand doors wow. in you know some small neighborhoods and and it's just it's. It, if you look at it in a 50 and a longer year picture, everything changes. Sure. Like you don't ever think about selling anymore. Um, so, so I, I just, I just, I just want to make sure that people are looking at things from the right perspective on when it comes to the education. Before we move along here, Tom nailed it as far as the deal. So he mentioned that to Turnkey, fantastic book, and it's amazing how a lot of the newer investors have come in. They've never done a deal before, and they don't know the questions to ask. They don't know what they're looking for. They don't know what a, a, a scope of work is. Uh, they may have an idea what a scope of work is, but they don't know what they're looking at. They don't know what the questions they're supposed to be asking. And yet over time, as they do more deals, they learn to ask the right questions. They don't necessarily have to be hammering nails. They don't have to be uh, painting walls to understand the right kind of questions or how to evaluate a deal. So I think you're absolutely right on that path. So, um, so those are, again, those are the types of things we're going to try to bring for you guys throughout this this project. Um, and uh, really excited about this podcast and what we can bring. So Act of Turkey podcast and uh, really excited. So Olson Group. We do provide uh, rental por uh, investments for rental portfolios. And so if you're looking to build a portfolio with rentals, we can do that for you. We can help bring that value to you. And uh, that's all we have for today. So Tom, yeah, I mean, thanks so, for joining. So yeah. we are on all the podcast yeah. platforms. If you're watching this on YouTube, please check us out on Facebook mm -hmm. or check us out on Stitcher or Inst or, or the um, all the podcast platforms. Um, you can also check us out. If you're looking to maybe get on Jared's list or if you're looking mm -hmm. for a way to be able to connect with us better, mm -hmm. go to buyolsengroup.com. That's B-U-Y. Like you're going to buy a property, sure. right? You're going to buy from us, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, just kidding. So <laughs> buy Olsen Group, kind of. <laughs> buyolsengroup.com. And you can connect us with us there. And um, I, I, if there's anything we can ever do for you, I would just I would love to be able to help you guys. And I hope that this podcast serves as a form um, to be able to do so. Well, that's all we have today for our first podcast. Thank you for joining us on the Active Turnkey Podcast. And this is the best way to buy rentals. Thanks, guys. We'll see you guys later. Have a good day.